Hello, Paul. Thanks for coming in today and talking with us about STEM careers in South Australia. That's a pleasure, Tanya. Now, I want you to start us off buzzwords of the moment. There are probably teachers out there who are thinking, Hi, everyone's talking about entrepreneurs, innovation, startups. Can you just define some of these words for us, please? Yeah, sure. I'll do my best. An entrepreneur is somebody who starts and builds value in our community. Um, that often means starting a business, but they bring um, a vision to the table and then they assemble all the resources that they need in order to realise that vision. Being innovative is uh, about uh, conceiving and developing new products, new processes, new ways of doing things, uh, and carrying that all the way through to the customer. A startup essentially is a, a temporary business um, that exists to find a viable business model. So uh, any business in its early stages is, is a startup, uh, and eventually it graduates to becoming a business. Now there's a specific view of a startup being a technology company, and so um, often when you hear of the startup um, community, uh, people will be talking about potentially high growth technology companies. But in a very real sense, any business goes through a startup phase. Once you get to that stage that you've got a proven viable business model, then you're essentially a business. Um, but uh, it, the term startup gets used in a very broad way. But if it's useful to think that not every um, startup becomes a business. Sometimes through that process of a investigating and searching for that business model, they either pivot to a different opportunity um, or they realise that uh, rather than invest more time in it, that it's time to move on to something else. Big businesses are often in a situation where they're possibly in a declining industry or even if they're not, they're often looking at productivity improvements, which often means doing the same or doing more with fewer people. So the reality is the big businesses tend to be uh, reducing headcount over time. The new jobs are, tend to come from growing businesses that are starting small and growing. So I think that's a really exciting part of the economy. Uh, a lot of these new businesses are changing the way that things are done. So it's, they need to be agile, um, and they can be. A lot of the big businesses find it really hard to, um, to pivot quickly and, um, and change direction. But... Um, these small enterprising um, businesses driven by entrepreneurs are typically very agile. And an entrepreneur doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who's um, technically driven. In fact, many of the best entrepreneurs rely on others for the technology. They're people that can, um, as I said, that can uh, see the opportunity, um, see a way forward and know how to uh, assemble the resources necessary to address that opportunity. The role of an entrepreneur um, is very much um, to identify an opportunity, assemble the resources required. They don't necessarily need to have all the resources themselves, um, but it means they have to be, they have to develop skills in, in negotiating with people that can help them. Um, and often it's a case of asking because if you don't ask, you don't get. And it's amazing how generous a lot of people will be uh, for someone starting a new business. Um, if they are respectful and polite and um, ask for help. Innovation goes all the way through to commercialisation as well. So it's, not, it's one thing to uh, develop a new product, but you also have to get it to market. So innovation spans that whole, um, the breadth of uh, all of that process. And uh, one of the things that, because it gets used in marketing so much to say, this is an innovative new product, you should buy it, um, that tends to confuse the issue a little bit and it gets used in a very generalised sense. But if, if we think in terms of um, the process of either solving a problem or creating something new that will deliver some real value to a customer um, and then getting it all the way to that customer, that's the process of innovation. And I firmly believe that uh, innovation often happens at the intersection between disciplines. So don't be afraid to talk to people that, have, that come to a problem from a different direction. Um, and you know, work closely with people that are strong on creative and um, strong on marketing and strong on um, things that complement your own skill sets. When I was younger, uh, having your own business seemed like a very scary thing, and I I, I worked for a small business, and yep. it was it was really tough for them. They had a number yep. of tough years. I imagine that there are some parents out there thinking, I don't really want my student, my child, to be starting their own business because they remember those tough years. Yeah. Is that the case anymore? What's changing? So starting a new business is always going to be risky, but um, with the right skills and the right support, you can reduce those risks 
and maximise the opportunity. Um, a lot of um, students whose parents uh, ran their own business grow up expecting to run their own business. They want to be their own boss. Um, and that's, that, that's normalised for them. People whose parents have worked for as employees for other organisations um, often grow up with the expectation that they'll go to school, go to university, get a good job, um, build up their super so that they can retire in, in some comfort. Um, the reality is that uh, those people that want to lead the most exciting lives and have the greatest control are also having to take risk in doing that. Um, the skill of being an entrepreneur is about managing risk, not about avoiding it altogether. So there will be good times and bad times, um, and you need a business model that will sustain you through the bad times as well as the good times. Traditionally, we've probably felt a little bit like if we fail with something, that we are now a failure. Um, and that's, that's just so wrong. The, the reality is that we need to be thinking about um, everything that we do uh, is a way of learning. And as you learn, if you don't fail, then literally you're not trying hard enough. Um, so the, there are, there's a real sense in America that a lot of investors uh, won't touch somebody who hasn't failed at least once. For example, um, you can go through a period of time when it's really hard to fail because people keep throwing money at you. And that, that actually happened in the dot-com boom. And then all of a sudden people started thinking, what are we investing in here? Is there ever going to be a return on it? And so there was a big collapse. But those people hadn't learned anything through that process because they were able to just they focused just on getting eyeballs onto websites and things like that without really securing what the business model would be. Um, so the people that have failed through that process have often learnt what not to do next. The entrepreneur has got to be prepared to experiment and take a chance on something. Um, the smart entrepreneurs fail small. They'll, they'll test things. And I'm a firm believer that the, uh, the best way of developing a business uh, is to do it in, a, uh, in an iterative way where at no stage are you risking your whole business. You're um, testing your assumptions as you go and uh, you test the most important assumptions early so that if there is a problem, you know about it early before you've invested t too much money and too much of your own time. So that's a really important part of the process, um, evaluating, identifying and evaluating the, the, the assumptions that are needed to be met for, for success to happen. Uh, to do that early and to do it frequently. And most of those assumptions, the biggest assumptions, often have to do with is there a customer and what are the needs of that customer and does what I'm offering them meet those needs? And so testing those sorts of assumptions. And that's, the, that's one of the things that a lot of people that are good with technology um, find it's, it's harder to potentially approach the customer. They'll try and get the perfect product before going to, to a customer to say, hey, what do you think of this? And um, that's inevitably the wrong way to do it. Very risky because you've basically yep. built your entire business, yep. yeah, yeah. Got you've invested all of that yep. before you then work out, oh, actually, nobody likes yep. what, I've, yep. what I've produced. So you can find out a lot simply by talking to customers. And uh, the other thing is to be ready to listen. Um, it's really important to uh, not ask leading questions, to ask questions of somebody who's a customer that will solicit information rather than yes-nos, to understand preferences, to understand uh, what might be enablers or barriers to the use of a, a potential product. Um, so you can, you can actually do that before you've even produced anything. Uh, and these days you can mock up um, using, um, uh, you know, mock up like on a website or something like that, a view of what something might look like without producing the finished product and test that with people. Uh, then we talk about um, rather than having something that has all the bells and whistles that might possibly be wanted, what, for example, what your product might look like in 10 years' time, um, let's have what we call a minimum viable product. What are the essential features that will make this really useful for your customer? Um, and then you can think about adding to it uh, afterwards. But you can really focus on getting the best possible um, solution for, um, as, for your target market. And I, I honestly think that a lot of people start with the idea for a product that anyone could use. Um, don't talk about a product that anybody could use to an investor. Talk about um, that segment of the market for whom your product is the absolute best solution. 
um, and you'll get a lot more traction and it'll be a lot easier to identify how to reach that customer than it is if you're trying to sell something to everybody. Even the biggest mm. companies in the world, companies like Apple and Microsoft, started with a product that was directed at a small market segment and then grew from there. What advice do you have for a student? Say they're in the senior years in high school, they've got a great idea for something maybe tech related, maybe not. What advice do you have for them? Where should they go from now? So first and foremost, I think um, having a look at what support is available, talking to people, uh, talking to, to their teachers perhaps in the first instance, but connecting with the various co-working spaces, build a network. There's a lot of meetups um, that are focused on helping people to develop businesses. And if it's in the mobile space, for example, there's a thing called Mobile Monday. Um, those co-working spaces, those competitions like the e-challenge that I mentioned and Venture Dorm, which is uh, run by Flinders University, are great ways of um, getting into a program that will teach you heaps about um, how to commercialise, uh, develop and commercialise a product. Um, so there's lots of opportunities and the key, finding the right one, um, that's part of the problem I think. Once um, you're able to talk to some of the people in the ecosystem, they can help uh, direct you to, to other people. But it's a really helpful group of people um, working in that space to help people. So it would be quite acceptable for say year 10, 11, 12 students to even get involved, perhaps with their teachers, perhaps not get involved with some of those programs, that's a realistic thing? Absolutely, and some of the programs are geared more towards that than others, so um, that's a big part of, of navigating that. What's South Australia doing to help startups, entrepreneurs? What are, what are we doing specifically? South Australia has a fantastic ecosystem of support for entrepreneurs. The universities are all providing um, support for uh, people to start new businesses, uh, both from the point of view of educating them in the skills required to be a successful entrepreneur, but also in terms of giving them um, opportunities through co-working spaces that they develop, um, accelerated programs, things like the e-challenge, which is a competition uh, where students, um, and not restricted to students, but uh, each team has to have at least one student, um, can build uh, a value proposition and present it through a showcase and then go on to pitch their business plan. Um, and there's a number of categories that people can win in. What we've found is that people often go from one of those programs into another of the programs and they refine their skills through that process. Um, so there's uh, a really strong network of support uh, across a whole different, a whole range of categories. We did a mapping of all of the programs and there's uh, 127 different programs in Adelaide to support entrepreneurs from that, from networking events all the way through to helping them get funded. Very cool. Mm. Where can teachers find that map so that they can perhaps pass on that information to students? We're just in the process of organising to produce an interactive version of that map, but I've got a, a, a wiki where I always keep the latest version as a PDF. Um, that's Adelaide Entrepreneurship Forum dot wikispaces dot com. Great, thank you. Um, so. In terms of um, South Australia, what are, what are some actual specific examples? Ideas that perhaps are more general, but maybe some of the more unique ideas as well of startups that are happening. Uh, there's been some fabulous examples. The innovation agenda, the, the promotional um, ads that the Commonwealth Government are putting on TV highlight um, an Adelaide company called Maker's Empire. Maker's Empire produce uh, platforms for teaching kids how to uh, program 3D printers and have been incredibly successful in selling that uh, platform around the world. So schools all around the world are buying it and uh, uh, teaching their kids how to program a, a 3D printer. So that's one really exciting example. Another one um, that's been through, uh, in fact all of these have been through the various programs in the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem in Adelaide and had support from those. Uh, but Voxybox is a, a team from here in Adelaide that have created, they're inspired essentially by uh, the Star Wars, um, the first Star Wars movie where Princess Leia is on this 3D, 3D um, hologram. How can and, you not be inspired by that? It was a great moment. <laughs> <laughs> and they've created the technology to produce a 3D hologram like that. Um, and it's fascinating. They've uh, now managed to partner with somebody in the US and they've got an investment um, to produce that as something that people can develop games for. 
So um, I'm looking forward with great interest to see what happens with that. It's going to be it's going to take gaming to a whole new level in terms of a 3D experience. Um, another example which is really interesting, um, not sure whether it's continuing, but there was a um, through the Mega program, um, a guy called Sasha Dragovelich um, introduced uh, the idea of a, a boss camp, which was going to uh, teach kids in high schools about entrepreneurship. And uh, so that was, you know, the mantra of be your own boss. Um, yeah, like a boss, I think was the, the mantra. So he actually developed uh, that and um, developed the business model for how it could be franchised and, and commercialised. Uh, through one of the programs in the ecosystem and then went on to be one of the programs in the ecosystem. So that was pretty exciting too. Are there any specific business areas that are growing that students should start thinking about getting into now or is it open slather, anything goes, anything's um, possible? I, I believe that we, we need, um, we have some areas of real strength and real opportunity but we also need to be able to support uh, a very broad cross-section of um, new businesses. Um, some of the areas that are really exciting at the moment are Adelaide's um, emergence as both a smart city uh, and also as a carbon neutral city. So clean technology, um, the, the kinds of things that will provide compelling experiences for people on the streets of Adelaide. So being a smart city isn't just about having smart lighting and smart parking um, you know, and sensors in bins that tell a truck driver when, when that bin needs to be emptied. That's great for saving money and making things more efficient. But if you're walking past that bin on the street and you're a visitor to Adelaide, you have no idea that that's at, that's at work, that that's helping to make Adelaide a smart city. But if you can walk past um, the Adelaide Town Hall and have an app on your phone where you can look up and see an augmented reality view of the Beatles on the uh, on the balcony of the Adelaide Town Hall in 1960, whatever it was. Yeah, 63, I think. And, and hear the shouts and screams of the uh, of the fans on the street. That that sort of thing, and then go to different places and see, start to get a feel for some of the history, um, some of the indigenous history, for example. If you had a a walking tour on your on your phone that could take you to different locations in the city and know and understand and have videos that portray the significance of that site to, to our Indigenous community. Those sorts of things can add real um, colour and texture to the, the experiences of a visitor to the city and, in many cases, to, uh, to residents of the city as well. The opportunity for students is enormous because it's never been easier to start um, a company. Um, there's so many uh, opportunities, there's so many um, tools that are available uh, that means that it's, it's less expensive uh, to do it now and there's so much support, particularly in a place like Adelaide where um, the entrepreneurial ecosystem is incredibly supportive of people looking to start new businesses. All of that sounds wonderful and it sounds like South Australia is a, a great place to be starting a business as a young person. Tanya, I think it's the best place in the world to start a business as a young person. Great. Thanks for coming in, Paul. Thank you.